This is the world's smallest NECA Ninja Turtle action figure. I built it myself from scratch using a 3D scanning technique called photogrammetry. In this video, I'm going to show you the entire process from generating a 3D model, to 3D printing it, then painting it, and finally making a custom box for it. Let's go! What's going on everyone? This is Dwayne Shoots Toys and today I'm going to be trying out a 3D scanning technique called photogrammetry. Basically this technique allows you to create a 3D model of an object by taking several photos around it from various angles and then importing those images into some specialized software. Now I'm completely new to this technique, I've never done it before, so you're going to be watching me do it for the first time, uh, but I'm just going to jump right into it and do my best and hopefully things go smoothly. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a little area where I can place the figure and move around it to take some photos. I tried to make sure that the area was well lit without too many harsh shadows on the object, so I've got light hitting the figure from a few different angles. I'm using a Panasonic GH3 in manual mode so that the settings don't change from shot to shot. Uh, you could also do this with a cell phone camera, but the quality is going to be a bit better with a camera like this. I took photos of the toy going around it at various heights, and I took a few photos over the top of it too. In the end, I gathered around 70 different shots of the figure. Next, I imported those images into some photogrammetry software. The program I'm using is called Reality Capture, and it's available at CapturingReality.com. The software is free to download, but you have to pay once you decide to export a 3D model. And the cost of that 3D model is dependent on the number and quality of images that you upload. In my case, the cost of exporting this model worked out to $1.75, which is a pretty decent price. I then imported the model into my slicing program called Cura. Here I can adjust all the 3D printing settings. As you can see, most of the details were captured. There were some small errors in the model, those little red areas, but I'm not too concerned about them. I'm going to use a lot of support material to make sure that the 3D print turns out all right. And once I've got the print settings locked in, I'll copy that file over to my 3D printer. I'm using the Creality Ender 3 Pro, and as I mentioned before, I included a lot of support materials to make sure that it printed out all right. In the end, it took just under two hours to print. This is what it looked like with all the support materials. Uh, it's kind of annoying to remove everything, but I don't mind it because adding all these supports reduces the chance of the print failing. This is the minifigure, and it's not bad, and it looks like a pretty accurate representation of the original object. Next, we've got to give it a quick paint job to add some color. I'm just using some cheap acrylic paints to color the figure. I'll start by first laying down a green base layer, and then I'll slowly start coloring in the rest of the figure and adding more detail. And I finish things off with a bit of dry brushing just to add some subtle variation in the color. And here's how it turned out. Now, I'm not an expert painter at all. I'm still learning, but I'm fairly happy with the end result. Now that the figure itself is done, let's make a box for it. I'm going to replicate the box from the 7 inch version of this figure. The first thing I'll do is open up the box and take out the inside backing. Then I'll flatten everything and bring it over to my scanner to copy the images over to my computer. Since my scanner isn't that big, I'll need to do a few scans to get all of the images. And once they're in my computer, I'll edit them into a template using Photoshop. Then I'll print out a couple of low quality test images to get the correct size. Uh, in this case, the middle one seems to be the best. And now that I've decided on a size, I'll print it out onto photo paper with higher quality settings. The next step is to cut everything out. And I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut out the space where the figure will be displayed. So far, it's looking like this. I'll cut up some leftover plastic packaging from an old toy to make the clear plastic window for the figure. And then I'll glue it all together with some super glue. 
and I'll fold the inside backing piece together too and slip it inside. Finally, I'll need to make the inner tray and for this I cut up and glued together another piece of plastic packaging. I also made some mini accessories. Uh, the hand and the headband were 3D printed, while the pizza and nunchucks were made out of polymer clay. I glued the accessories to the plastic and then placed the figure in the middle and slid everything into the box. And there you have it, a completed miniature NECA Michelangelo movie figure. So photogrammetry is a pretty cool technique to make miniature clones of things. It's going to open up a lot of new possibilities for my toy photography. I've done quite a few projects that feature my action figures playing with miniature toys, but the miniature toys in my older photos have been items that I had to purchase. Uh, but now I can make my own mini toys, so it's going to make things a lot easier uh, when it comes to creating scenes like that. Leave me a comment and let me know what kinds of objects you'd want to make a miniature 3D model of. Would you want to clone your action figures? Would you want to make some miniature sneakers? Or would it be something else? Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.